Judge Boom McGrath. Good morning. Who I am is not important. There are several people that appreciate the way that the bench is addressing issues. I'm honored. You're being considered for the appellate court. But I thought appointments to the appellate court were by the president. What makes you think you were wrong? Hello? Hello? How does my flower look? It looks fine. You hardly looked at me. Honey, you look beautiful. Well, you don't. Pull these pants up a bit more. What's with the crooked bow tie? Why are you so nervous? I'm nervous. What are you talking about? Yes, you are. You've been twitching and twittering all morning. Look, I'm not nervous. I've just never been married before. I've never been married either. What makes you so special? You know, if only men would take the time to know what women are feeling. Feelings? You want to talk about feelings? Who didn't pick me up from Kennedy Airport or call me for six months? Oh, well, it didn't take you long to hook up with your old girlfriend who lives in Texas, though, did it? What was I supposed to do? Sit at the airport for six months waiting for you to tell me what was bothering you? <sighs> women want men to be mind readers. Mind readers, right. Well, it didn't take you long to pick someone else's mind to read, did it? Look, I told you. We lived in the same apartment building in Houston. Same apartment building. How do I know it wasn't the same apartment for that matter? Do you really want to get into this again? Yeah, I think... Good morning. Mr. McClellan? Miss Chadsworth? Yes. Yes. We've got about three or four minutes, and I just want to take some time to counsel those about ready to throw in the towel. It's a figure of speech from my other profession. I'm a professional boxing referee. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I've seen you before. The uh, Parenti Tagagi fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they definitely threw some punches. Now, listen, if you guys don't want to throw any punches, just follow these three simple rules. Sometimes you say yeah, sometimes you say no. Sometimes you say nothing at all. Listen, forget the past. It's gone. It's not even worth it. It's useless. That is, unless. Unless what? Unless you can't forget the past. Okay? Let's get you guys married. Neely McClellan. Yes? Police Department, we need to speak with you. Hey, sure, come on in. I'm Officer Adams, and this is my partner, Detective Kennedy. Yes? How can I help you, gentlemen? What's this? You've been charged with the crime of bigamy. Bigamy? What? Yes, bigamy is a felony. We're informing you that you can voluntarily come with us to the station for processing right now, or you must report on your own by 2 p.m. What's going on? Bigamy? But I've only been married once. Well, maybe more complicated than that. More complicated than what? Did you live in Houston, Texas for seven months? For six months. Did you know a lady by the name of Blanche Anderson? Blanche Anderson, are you kidding me? Okay, my partner and I will give you time for a little coffee, maybe a Xanax. But we do need you, Mr. McClellan, to report into Center Street by 2 p.m. today. Understood? I would advise you not to be late.
The Honorable Judge Rhonda Sanchez presiding. Please be seated. I appreciate everyone's willingness to participate in this auxiliary court today. As you know, the district court is still being remodeled. This is the trial of the United States versus Nellie McLelland. May the record reflect that the federal government is represented by United States Associate Attorney Johnny Wood, while Mr. McLelland is present with his attorney, Mitchell McLaughlin. Mr. McLellan, you have been charged with the crime of bigamy. That means the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you knowingly got married while the prior marriage was still valid. In a prior hearing before this court, you indicated your desire to waive your right to a jury trial and proceed with a court trial. Is that still your intent today? Your Honor, yes it is. Counsel, any other matters before we proceed? Yes, Your Honor. We request that the court reconsider the defendant's motion to dismiss. Denied. Mr. Wood, anything before we begin? Yes, Your Honor. We are prepared to prove that the prior Texas marriage is valid. Now, the state of Texas requires three elements to establish common law marriage. First, that the parties voluntarily consent to be married. The second is that the parties must have lived together at the conception of marriage. And third, that the parties hold themselves out as being married. We are prepared to prove each and every element that existed at the time of the case. Yes, counsel. As previously agreed, both counsel are waiving their right to an opening statement. Mr. Wood, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. We call to the stand Mrs. Blanche Anderson. Hello, Ms. Anderson. Hi. So now you've testified that you lived at 14400 Bering Drive in Houston, Texas during the same time as my client, Ms. McClellan did, is that correct? That's correct. However, he lived in Unit 304 while you resided in Unit 204. Yeah, it was a duplex. It had a shared door. Ah, yes, the shared door. I was coming to that. This door did have a lock, correct? Oh, yes. Thank you. No more questions. Redirect, Mr. Wood. Mrs. Anderson, was this uh, door ever locked? No. Objection, Your Honor. The video that was submitted earlier in the evidence does not show my client, Ms. McClellan, or for that matter, Ms. Anderson, 100% of the time. Well, yes, Your Honor. We do plan to get to that issue. But the spirit of the matter is that the videotape clearly shows Mr. McClellan entering and exiting at times with no use of a key. Overrule. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, how often did Mr. McClellan come over? He would go to his unit about once a week. I, uh, I mean, how often did he come to the unit both share? Oh, um, well, he never left. We lived together. Occasionally, he would go to his unit to pick up some stuff, though. Well, so, was there a separate bed for Mr. McClellan? <laughs> no. Well, let me back up a little bit. How many bedrooms were in the apartment? It was a studio. Meaning? There was only one bed. Well, then, Miss McClellan slept on the couch. Objection. Overrule. <laughs> no. No. Well, Mrs. Anderson, where did Mr. McClellan sleep? In bed. With me. Oh, I see. I think that clarifies things. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Miss Anderson claims that she and Mr. McClellan announced that they were getting married. Prosecution has shown videos of this. However, we have shown that they were drinking heavily at a friend's birthday party. Mr. McClellan was not serious, Your Honor. Also, Miss Anderson claims that they lived together. 
She actually secretly videotaped the ongoings in her own unit. We have no way of knowing if this videotape was edited because there was no chain of custody to follow. And lastly, Mr. McClellan paid for his own unit. Not one dime went to Ms. Anderson's. We have shown that Ms. Anderson may have a financial motivation for bringing about this action. That is all. Thank you, Your Honor. Congresswoman, Judge Rhonda Sanchez has struck down common law marriage as marriage. That decision is gonna send shockwaves through American jurisprudence. How is that? Basically, the judge stepped out into a major intersection of American law and said, stop. If you're not married in a ceremony, then you're not married. But the United States has already said that, correct? Common law marriage is not recognized here. The judge took a blowhorn and made it official. The nation of Canada is following this case for certain reasons. Canadian businesses have been calling me from both Nova Scotia and Ontario, inquiring about the status of their dual citizenship residents and the tax status of certain transactions. What does this mean? The implication could be hundreds of millions of dollars. We have a storm coming. Rhonda Sanchez has refused to recognize common law marriage in finding Neely McClellan not guilty for the recently enacted federal crime of bigamy. Although Blanche Anderson, who won a Texas ruling that she and Mr. McClellan were indeed married by common law. Mr. McClellan has since married in a traditional ceremony in New York and was acquitted for the felony crime. I'm Beverly Woodington, Witness Stand America. Thank <laughs> you.
Mr. Brooks, the common law decision in federal court, what about it? It sends a message to men that you can't have the milk without buying the cow. I'm not so sure I like the metaphor of a cow being used when we're talking about women. All the same, the ruling sends a message that women can demand more of men. Ms. Leota, do you not agree that this helps women? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't like the suggestion that women are these helpless creatures that need to depend on men for assistance. We do think for ourselves, you know. It's not surprising that my liberal colleague is arguing for welfare. Welfare? How so, Mr. Brooks? The hardest hit sector of our economy are the mothers, where the fathers of the children involved have abandoned responsibility. Hmm. And I and my colleague have argued this many times in chamber. This is not a decision of welfare. This is about telling people what to do based on a preconceived notion. And that notion is what? That this country is founded on biblical standards of what is right and what is wrong. Many of our forefathers openly acknowledged their Christian leanings, did they not, Ms. <clears throat> President? Yes, that is absolutely true. But this is the 21st century. Many things have progressed. Should not how we govern. We have judges steering that in our courts today. Look, we have to have some definition of right and wrong, or we have anarchy. The negligence case over the death of Noodles the dog begins in federal district court today. Noodles was well known for his role in the dog dog non movies as the dog in the beer glass commercials, as well as guest starring on numerous TV shows. His owner, Barbara Harris, claims the defendant breached his duties by failing to operate his vehicle in a safe manner. The defendant admits to being distracted by, of all things, a topless woman. He's counter-suing and claims that the whiplash injuries that he received did occur due to Ms. Harris allowing Noodles to run free. Driver has a responsibility to watch the road. It's the mentality of a five-year-old child. And if this was a child who had run out into the street after their ball and got hit and killed, this wouldn't even be a thing. As you can see by the small shrine of flowers left at the site of the accident on the day of the trial, many people still fondly remember Nudis. Members of the jury, driving's a privilege. There's a reason we take a driver's test to get a driver's license. It's because there's an inherent risk and responsibility involved when you're driving a two-ton hunk of steel down the road. It means that you agree to maintain a certain reasonable amount of care when you are performing a potentially dangerous act, in this case, driving. Mr. Kozlowski breached his duty of care as a licensed automobile driver when he did not control his vehicle and hit and killed Ms. Harris's dog's noodles. There is no amount of money that will bring back what Ms. Harris has lost. But we are asking for compensatory damages for loss of companionship and loss of future earnings. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my colleague here, Mr. Dean, is playing with your emotions. Obviously, we all feel very bad for noodles. Some of you may have seen him on TV. I feel just as sad. But this is not the issue. The issue is completely different. It's about the fault. Whose fault is it that Noodles died? And you will hear the evidence that my client was distracted by a very attractive woman who was publicly exposing her breasts, walking half naked. This criminal act of indecent exposure was an unforeseeable intervening event. Ultimately, the evidence will show that Mr. Kozlowski had a perfect driving record and that this accident would not have occurred but for the failure of Ms. Harris to control her dog. Think about it. Would any reasonable person play with their dog so close to the street? She breached her duty of reasonable care by throwing that ball, which was the proximate cause of the accident, and brought about the injury sustained by my client, Mr. Kozlowski. 
for which he now requests to be compensated. Thank you. So, Ms. Harris, let me make sure I understand. You threw a ball and your dog ran into the street. Noodles was well trained. The driver of that car was texting and not paying attention. You're not answering my question, Ms. Harris. Please <clears throat> answer the question. Yes, I threw the ball like I always did with Noodles. Drivers don't pay attention, and that's why Noodles is dead. And did you throw the ball towards the street, Miss Harris? No, of course not. The ball. Rolled it to the street before Noodles could get to it. <laughs> and. Didn't you think, Miss Harris, that by throwing the ball near the street, it may roll into the street? Noodles, no! I always threw the ball that way. And he always got it before it went into the street. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Miss Harris. That's when the car, like, boom, hit, whatever. I mean, it's, yeah. I guess it's that lady's dog or something. Cause, yeah. Yeah. But she, she. Hey there, baby. All right, How stay you with doing? me. Stay with me. Stay with me. All right. So what? What? Uh, what all did you see? Mr. Bridge, uh, will you please state where you were on the Dayton question? Your Honor. I think I should let you know that I filed a formal complaint against the city of New York for false arrest on that day. Noted, Mr. Bridge. This is a separate matter. Can you please answer the question? I was detained illegally. You know what? Go ahead and give me some idea. You got something on you? No. All right, sir. Uh, yeah, I, no, I got yeah. an idea. No, no, I no, got no, an no, idea. No. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, we can go over here and talk about it. Okay. You got it? I got an idea. It's quick. It's OK. Let's see. All right, let me see. Let me see. I told you I had an idea. OK. All right. It's good. It's good. Still, can, let me, can I have my idea? No. Let's go over here. I want to make sure I get all your details. Yeah, no, I no, no, I got to go. It's getting late. No. I'm yeah. need you to come with me, OK? No. Get your hands off me, man. I didn't do anything, man. Hadn't done anything wrong. I was walking on Garfield Place. What'd you see? She didn't have any clothes on. Can you please explain that, Mr. Bridge? A uh, lady stepped outside. She was topless. Her dress was showing. Is that woman in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you identify her? Order. The record show that Mr. Bridge has identified Geneva Stevens. What did you do? Stopped and watched. <laughs> Fair enough. When you saw Miss Stevens, where was she exactly? Outside of the doorway of the building she just stepped out of. Okay, was this around the time of the accident? Yes. So, to be clear, uh, she was not in front of the car that was involved in the accident, is that correct? No. Okay, was she even in the street? No. Thank you. 
No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Blackburn? You're drinking, correct? What's that? You were drinking, Mr. Bridge. Yeah, so what? How much had you had? By the time you saw this accident, how much had you had? I don't know. Well, the accident occurred about 6 p.m. Had you worked that day? I had. And did you start drinking at 5, 5.15, 5.30? How, how is any of this your business? Your Honor, please direct the witness to answer the question. Answer the question, Mr. Bridge. I got out of work early that day. Um, I think I started drinking around one. And um, what had you had to drink before 6 p.m.? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Bridge isn't on trial today. Do we really need to go into this level of detail of his daily activity? He's a witness to an accident, Your Honor. It goes to his credibility. I'm going to allow this last question to Mr. Bridge, Ms. Blackburn, and then let's move on. Thank you, Your Honor. What had you had to drink, Mr. Bridge, before 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. on that day? I think I had um, a couple of train wrecks, kamikaze, 352, a couple of laggers, Irish car bomb, light. Um, and you had a bottle of whiskey on your person. And having consumed this quantity of adult beverage, Mr. Bridge, you want this court to believe that you could accurately remember what you saw. I saw what I saw. Oh, Mr. Bridge, I find it really hard to believe you could even see. Objection. There's no question there, Your Honor. Withdrawn. You may step down, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Your Honor. Court will be in recess for one hour. All rise. Ms. Blackburn? We call Geneva Stevens to the stand. Raise your right hand, please. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and... Miss, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please state your name for the court. Geneva Stevens. Miss Stevens. Are you aware of the car accident we've been speaking of today? Yes. Okay. And where were you at approximately 6 p.m. on that day? I stepped out to take a walk. And did you step outside unclothed, Miss Stevens? I had on pants and running shoes. So you had no clothing at all from your waist up? That is correct. And were you aware of indecent exposure laws, Miss Stevens, when you did this? I just felt like taking a walk. Guys walk out around outside without their shirts on all the time. I didn't think it'd be a problem if I did the same. It's a little hypocritical, don't you think? No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Dean? Ms. Stevens, did you walk into the street? No, I walked on the sidewalk. So you in no way placed yourself in front of oncoming traffic? No. No further questions. You may step down, Ms. Stevens. Thousand Ton TV has been following the negligent noodles case, which took place in Brooklyn. It has been a case of interest as many fans have mourned the death of the dog star. The owner of noodles is a prominent educator in New York and is suing for negligence. The defendant and at least one witness seemed to claim the cause of the accident was a woman engaged in indecent exposure. We will continue to bring you all the news on this case. I'm Caitlin Bourgeois, Thousand Ton TV.
In the case of Harris versus Kozlowski, has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. How do you find? We find for the plaintiff, Barbara Harris, and against the defendant, Tom Kozlowski. We award Ms. Harris total damages in the amount of $125,000. So ordered, court is adjourned. All rise. How are you, Miss Anderson? I'm fine, thank you. I had a chance to review your chart, and I understand you would like to terminate this pregnancy. Yes, I would. Have you considered adoption? It's something I don't want to consider. Okay, may I ask why? I wouldn't like to talk about it. And I don't feel I have to. Listen, you're not obligated to tell me what your rationale is. But I just want to let you know that I cannot do this for you. What do you mean? I mean I cannot perform this procedure for you. You cannot? Or you will not? Miss Anderson, I'm sorry but I will not perform this procedure for you. I encourage you to reconsider your plans, considering there are alternatives. Doctor, I'm gonna need you to put everything that you've just said in writing. Everything. 